Hi everyone, my name is Courtney and today I am doing something different. So if you don't know me that well, I am a graduate student in creative writing. I am in my final year of my MFA and so next semester I am doing a thesis. I'm very unprepared for that and I'm very unprepared for the world at large. Especially when it comes to creative writing, sometimes I feel like I haven't learned that much. I know my writing has really grown in the last three years, but sometimes I don't feel like I pushed myself hard enough. I don't feel like my classes push me that hard. And I feel like I just need a little supplementary reading, especially because I have a very niche genre that I like to write in. I haven't explored that genre to its capacity, so I would like to be more well-versed in it. So I began writing about five years ago now and while I do write contemporary domestic stuff most of my stuff falls into the genre of like speculative fiction fabulous fiction otherworldly fiction so my genre is like that literary fiction genre that has a little bit of genre fiction thrown in there I'm definitely planning more genre YA novels because I read a lot of that but my particular like short story literary story style the type of story that I write for class is definitely more on the literary side or at least I'm trying to be more on the literary side and so I've always been a big reader I read a lot I read a lot of different genres but like I still haven't explored all there is in the sci-fi fantasy literary genre category I've only dipped my toes into certain authors like on my literary shelf I haven't really read like an author's whole catalog the only author that I've read the entire catalog for is JD Salinger which is like great but like doesn't really help me so my idea for this month and months going forward is to dedicate time to reading binging one specific author and like reading you know if not their whole catalog at least like a good chunk of it so I have a lot of authors on my list but I'm also open to your suggestions so if you have any suggestions for that literary genre fiction type thing definitely let me know but because this is the start of this journey this month I've decided to start with Karen Russell so if you don't know Karen Russell is a literary fiction speculative fabulous fiction writer she's written three short story collections and one novel I believe and she's kind of like hot right now like she's the hot author to be a couple years before this like people were just like not okay about this genre there are still a lot of snooty literary fiction people that are not really okay with this genre kind of impeding on their territory I guess and she also happens to be one of my favorite authors but I feel reluctant seeing one of my favorite authors because I haven't read everything that she's written when I took my first literary fiction class we read one of her stories and it completely changed my perspective on literary fiction I was like okay I can write something that's literary with this weird genre thrown in I'm so glad that that teacher decided to put that story in there because like I wouldn't have known not that I wouldn't have known it was possible but like but when you read short stories you know throughout middle school high school college you don't typically read that stuff I was so pleasantly surprised to see that it really felt like the doors were opening since I've read one and a half of Karen Russell's work I decided to pick her first because I only have to read a book a novel and then the rest of a collection that I've started. So yes, let's get into the books that I have to read. So this is Karen Russell's debut collection, St. Lucy's Home for Girls. This has pretty good reviews, but some people don't think that all the stories hit perfectly well, and I, I do agree. To me, the titular story, St. Lucy's Home for Girls, is like a perfect story. I love that story so much. It's one of my favorite short stories of all time, but a lot of the other stories in this catalog just like don't quite hit the mark. But one of the things that makes the stories great even though that they're not quite there yet is that all of the stories to me at least really resonate and like are really memorable because of that weird speculative atmosphere that she brings. I believe Karen Russell is originally from Florida or she lived in Florida for a very long time. She's lived in a couple different places throughout her life and her stories are really influenced by the places that she's lived in. The story collection in particular has a, like a lot of Floridian atmosphere to it. It's like a speculative take on like swamps and alligators and like seaside coastal stuff and environment is very important to her short stories and I really appreciate that. I think that's one of the things that makes the stories so memorable even if they aren't perfect is because they're so specific in their speculative elements. This short story collection is good. It's not great but it does have one of my favorite stories of all time. And then her last collection which she published last year is Orange World. So I have not read all of the stories in here but I actually do have the sign because I met her at my school. She came to read. So I've read four or five of the stories in here. My favorite stories in here are The Prospectors which is the first story and Orange World which is the last story. I love Orange World. It is such a great story. 
Again, the titular story is always great. This collection covers more mature topics, not necessarily mature in content, but just because the characters are more mature. But again, there are these speculative elements. There's this importance of environment and atmosphere, and a lot of these stories are just perfect. Yes, I will be possibly rereading some stories, but definitely finishing out the stories that I haven't read. And then as far as the books I'm purchasing and reading, we have Vampires in the Lemon Grove. I know a, a couple people that really like this collection, so I'm very intrigued by it. And then there's Swamplandia, which is her most read book, but also her most poorly reviewed book. Like it has like three point something stars on Goodreads, which is like really bad for a Goodreads rating. The rest of her books have like a low four star, which is a lot more normal. So I'm very intrigued by Swamplandia because a lot of people do not seem to like it. So this is my journey into taking charge of my own education. I love the idea of reading an author's entire catalog and really knowing them as a writer, really understanding them, and I think it will open up and help me understand the genre that I'm wanting to write in more. So yes, that's what I'm doing. Let's go to Barnes & Noble and see what books they have there and hopefully they will have the ones I need. So I've gone to Barnes & Noble and I've picked up what I can find of Karen Russell's stuff and I'm pretty sure I have everything now. So I have Swamplandia, her novel, A Vampire in the Leaven Groves, another short story collection, and then I also found Sleep Donation, which is a novella, which I thought was a short story um, in a collection, but I guess not. So there was a book on there I didn't even know about, so that's great. This month I'm going to be working on reading these three things, plus the short stories I haven't read in Orange World, and yeah, we're gonna see how this goes. So I'm looking a little rough. <laughs> So it is a few days later now. I took the weekend to finish up some titles that I either had audiobooks of or stuff I wanted to finish before I started this whole endeavor. But it's Tuesday, October 6th, and I finished my first Karen Russell book. This is the book I have to read for class later on in a couple months, and I had already previously read five of the eight stories in here, so I only had three stories to read, which was about 110 pages. So they were pretty lengthy stories. I had to read The Tornado Auction, Black Corfu, and The Gondoliers. All three of these are like speculative-ish. They all have like the environmental aspect to them, whether that be like actually talking about environment politics or just like having like atmosphere and the environment play like a really crucial role in the story. So the tornado auction is in Arkansas and people can like raise storm clouds and tornadoes. Black Kofur is a historical-ish fiction set in Italy. It is about a doctor who kind of like takes care of the dead so that they don't turn into zombies. That one is like the least fantastical, but it's sort of ambiguous if like the fantastical stuff actually exists or not. And then there's the gondoliers, which is kind of a post-apocalyptic take on Florida where Florida is underwater and there's like people that live on top of the water. And it's about these four sisters who are gondoliers and like kind of take people around this area. So I really enjoyed all three of these stories. I think The Black Cofer was definitely one of my least favorite in the entire collection as a whole. It's a pretty lengthy story. I was reading along with the narrator of the audiobook and I don't know if it was just the narration or like what it was, but like I felt not as connected to that story. So from this collection, The Prospectors is one of my favorites. Orange World is one of my favorites. Like I liked The Bad Graft. I liked Bog Girl. I liked Madame Bovary's Greyhound. Like I liked all of them, but I don't. I feel like I need to reread them, honestly. And I kind of feel that way about like Black Cofor and The Gondolers. Cause like I like them, but like I feel like I need more time to sit with them. And I did really enjoy Tornado Auction. I thought that one was really fun. So yeah, finished my first collection. I think it's very interesting because I have read her entire first collection and I've read her entire last collection now, so I'm going to be reading everything in the middle. So for me, this is like her at her best. These stories are like her getting everything right. I think all of these stories were really poignant. Like I said, I feel like I need to reread them to like really grasp everything, but I don't think that took away from it. I just reading these stories for the first time, like I do think they were really powerful. She was just really on her game for all of these stories. Whereas her debut collection, I don't think every story hit quite necessarily, except for that last story, because I, I love that last story. It's going to be very interesting reading everything in the middle to like see that progression or what I assume is going to be a progression from like her debuting to her figuring it out, I guess. Not that these stories aren't good, but it's like, I still gave this four stars. I still really like that collection, but like, I think I really am going to see her growth through these stories. So I'm really 
excited about that. So I'm gonna read Swamplandia first. This is the most read book of hers. It is also the most polarizing, it seems. I think it might be because people went into this not knowing what it was. Having read her first collection, having read some of the like swampish stories, I think there are reoccurring characters in here and I think I might get a little bit more out of it than just like somebody stumbling across her work. But right now I'm going to do some reading for school. I have to read some Alice Munro this week. That is our author of the week. So I'm gonna start on that. And then tonight I have my workshop class, so I have to prepare for that. But at some point today, I will probably get started on this. And I'll let you know a little bit more as I get into this because it's a novel, so I think it's a little bit easier to discuss this as I'm reading it. I'm excited to be on this journey. <laughs> so it's October 9th, so I've been reading this for the past two days. I'm almost halfway through it, and so I can tell you a little bit more about this. So this is her debut novel. She wrote the short story collection, and then she wrote this and it was a finalist for the Pulitzer Prize. So like well received, but like as far as I can tell on Goodreads, not well received. So like the fancy people like it, the general public, not as much. And from what I can tell, like all the quotes and stuff, there's a lot of them, but they're all from journalists and not from like other writers. And normally blurbs are done by like friends most of the time. Some are done by like people that you ask to do. I don't know if it's just because she didn't have a lot of writerly friends back then. So that's a really interesting thing about this. This book follows some of the characters that we see in the story collection. There's like, I think three stories that follow the same characters that are in here. The story is about a young girl named Ava Bigtree. She's 13 years old. Her mother has recently passed away. Grandfather has been put in a living facility. And so it's just her, her brother, her older sister, and then their father. And they live in this place called Swamplandia, which is basically like a gator reserve where they like put on like little rinky dink kind of shows. It's like off the coast of Florida. It's very remote and it mostly follows Ava. And then there's a couple chapters that follow the brother character. Ava's sections are in first person. And I want to say that Kiwi, the brother's sections are in third person. So you are following very close to like young teen characters. It's definitely literary, but it has like a younger feel to some of the language and stuff, especially in Ava's chapters, because we're following a young protagonist. That's not to say that it isn't well written, but I think some of her newer stories definitely feel more polished in like the language and the tone and stuff like that. The world is very interesting. The environment is very interesting. These characters are like dealing with a lot of hardship. And honestly, like I just, I want to scoop up these children so badly and like, you know, care for them and put them like, you know, put them in school and stuff because they have some problems. They they need some help. But I would say compared to the other works that I've read, this it does feel more middle of the road. So it's enjoyable, but I'm intrigued to see how it ends because I have no idea. Hi guys, so it was a busy day for me. I went out to do my towels and my sheets. I have to walk like 15 minutes to go do my laundry, so that's always fun. So while I was doing my laundry, I went to the park. And while I was at the park, I was reading Swamplandia and I ended up finishing it. I got to like page 350 yesterday and I finished up the last 50 pages today. So I'm gonna give this a 3.5 stars. I enjoyed it, but I didn't love it. It's obviously a very talented writer. Her characters are really interesting. Her environments are really interesting and lived in, but I can definitely feel the debutness of this. A lot of things don't feel fleshed out in the right ways. There were areas where I wish that the book had spent more time on. I can definitely see that Karen Russell might be just more of a short story author. I don't know if she's working on another novel right now. She's only kind of reverted back to the short story format. A lot of the chapters in here felt like little short stories, like very contained episodic little adventures, and I kind of wish that this was a short story collection, a connected short story collection, but like if each chapter was like its own contained little episodic short story that are all like connected to give us the main plot of this I think might have been more effective. I personally don't care if books are like surprising or shocking. That's not really my MO, but I was a little bit disappointed in here that the book was kind of predictable. Normally that doesn't bother me, but what I love about Karen Russell is that she surprises me. I kind of predicted things that were going to happen, especially Ava's storyline, and I was just kind of a little bit disappointed that it didn't go in a different direction. It kind of went with the most obvious path, and I didn't need to necessarily be surprised, but I wish that something different had happened. There's a lot going on in these stories, but ultimately, like, not a lot actually happens. It's literary, so it's a lot more about, like, characters' internal struggles and stuff like that. I did really enjoy this, but 
Again, I don't think this is the best of Karen Russell's work. So her first book I gave a four stars only because I loved the last story in here, the titular story, so, so much. And then this is like a 3.5, so it's not as good as this collection in my mind. The interesting thing about this book is that, like I have said, that there are stories in here that connect back to this one. I don't think you necessarily need to read the stories in here to read this book, but I think definitely the stories really helped me because like I understood these characters I already had like a basis of knowledge there weren't like repetitive scenes but this book did like summarize and catch you up to speed about some of the stories we go through in this book which again makes me wonder if like these stories were included in this book if this book was a short story collection with just more of the Ava big tree stories in here like what would have happened this book is weird and fascinating in so many different ways and I did really enjoy it. It's so interesting to see like where this author started off and having read Orange World to see how much she has progressed. So I'm going to take a break from Karen Russell, read a different book as a palette cleanser, and then I'm going to get into Vampires in the Orange Grove, which is a short story collection, and just kind of see the progression but I'll see you guys in a little bit. I'm back. It's been about a week and I am almost done with Vampires in the Lemon Grove. I have one more story to read and of course it's the longest. I've been kind of slumpy especially with this whole task that I've put on myself. I'm like very much doubting the project. I've enjoyed uh, some of the stories in here but again just like reading this, reading all of her other work, I'm like starting to doubt if I actually like her as a writer. I do think like the good or okay stories like outweigh like the bad ones. It's just like now that I've read almost all of her work, I'm just like, do I actually like love her to the extent that I thought I did? And I think it's because I've been reading a lot of like really early work of hers. Not that it shouldn't have been published, but I think she's just starting to get into the groove with her writing. Her earlier work really inspires me in some ways. But it's just like not as well written. It's not as great with the character stuff. It always feels like it's good, but it's not quite there. I feel like if I read everything a writer has written, you know, if I read everything that Charles Dickens has written, or if I've read everything that Emily Bronte or whatever, I feel like if I read one author exclusively, I'm like not going to have them as my favorite author anymore because like I've seen like the good and the bad or like the stuff that appeals to me and the stuff that doesn't. In this way, reading a favorite author is kind of like a failed experiment because you're not going to like everything that an author writes. I think that's just the way it works. The stuff that is really good has really stuck with me. I feel like I am learning a lot about craft stuff, especially like the stuff that I think is just okay. I think those stories are like excellent ways to look at craft because me as a writer I'm looking at okay why didn't this story work for me? What would I have done differently? Do my stories have any of these characteristics that I can reflect and improve upon? So I do think I'm getting something out of reading all of this. Not that it's taxing, it is very much of a challenge to read like a bunch of lit fic from one author in a very short amount of time. You know, with school and everything, it is kind of time pressing. You know, not to say that I haven't enjoyed this process, but I kind of like went through a little bit of an existential crisis because of this. But I guess my goal isn't to love every story of hers. My goal is just to read a particular author's entire work and understand their craft and understand what they do and how they've grown as a writer. And so with this collection, this is her third novel. It's a short story collection. And and these stories are very different from her first collection. Her first collection mostly took place, a lot of them are in Florida, a lot of them are kind of around the US in like very specific locations. Whereas this collection I would say is more of like around the world type of approach. Like there's a story in Italy, there's a story in Japan, there are stories in the US as well. There's also stories that take place in different time periods as well. She's really trying to explore time and place in these stories. So far I liked Vampires in the Lemon Grove. I'm not sure about the ending of that story, but I really liked like the first half of it. Reeling for the Empire was the second story and that one has like set me off because I'm like this story is so good. I love this story so much. Like I like what the characters do. I I like the premise, everything about it, but it's so yikes. Like if this was written in 2020, like there would be some big issues because it takes place in Japan. To me personally, a lot of the characteristics of these characters come off as like very stereotypical. Even the narrator, I think the narrator is an Asian narrator because I recognize her from other audiobooks that I've read. I don't know, just something like about hearing like an Asian woman doing an accent for like a white author's 
Asian story like just something about that was just like really weird especially because to me it felt very like stereotypical over the top stereotypical not that it couldn't have a diverse cast I think it definitely could have had a diverse cast but I'm just I'm not sure about setting it in Japan with like a lot of stereotypical names and stuff like that it just I don't know if it worked for me the barn at the end of our term that one is my favorite so far that one was very satirical basically some of the US presidents like reincarnate as horses in this barn and like it was just kind of over the top and ridiculous and I kind of enjoyed that. The last story I have to read is the second to last story which is the longest one. It's like 50 or some 60 pages so I have to read that and I'll get back to you when I finish this collection. And then after that all I have left is Karen Russell's sleep donation which I was looking into this and this is actually a 2020 release so I think it came out fairly recently and even though you know this process has been weird and hasn't gone necessarily the way I thought it would I do want to continue doing this I just think it's really a really good thing for writers to do but let's get back to reading so it's been a week so I've figured this book out I'm not done with it yet but I figured it out so this book was originally published as an ebook at an ebook only publishing website that ebook website went down like within the year like it just didn't work out so this was originally published in 2014 from that publishing house as an ebook and then of course when a book goes out of print the author regains the rights for that so this was then republished this year by vintage press which has published all of karen russell's other books that's why it's published 2014 and 2020 and so it does kind of have those hallmarkers of her older writing this is a novella as you can see i'm like two-thirds of the way through it i have another 40 ish pages i should finish this today this is a world where there is a pandemic there are people that are medical insomniacs they cannot sleep and after a while they die there actually is a real medical thing that exists like this but it's very very rare it's like fatal insomnia i'm not sure what the medical name for it is that's not really mentioned in this book it's just knowledge that i have from a random youtube video so yeah that's like what's happening here it's like the same thing only it's like a widespread pandemic and there is like a sleep donation service where people collect sleep and donate it to help these people and so our main character is one of the recruiters for this whose sister died in the early stages of this and she like uses the story of her sister and the trauma she feels from that to collect people for this program and there like are a couple other reoccurring characters like there's a family with a small child or a baby and that baby is like the universal donor the only universal donor that they have found but yeah it's it's a weird book <laughs> it's very weird i like the world i wish it was more character focused this definitely feels more like an extended short story than a novella just because it doesn't have the same kind of feel with like character arts and plot arcs that like a normal novel would have what i've read from karen russell she does really seem to struggle with novel plot lines i just i feel like her work doesn't naturally fit into novel arcs that's not to say that her novels or longer works aren't good they just like don't fit traditional plot structures i guess well it's not my favorite of her works i don't think it'll end up being my favorite of her works thinking a lot about what i'm gaining from this experience and i just I love how Karen Russell can just say things in ways that I would never think to say them. She just is so great at using active verbs. When her writing is beautiful, it is absolutely gorgeous. There's so many stories that like I didn't love, but they're so memorable, which I think is really important because I've read so many domestic fiction, so many different kinds of short stories, and it's really hard to make short stories stick with people. And Karen Russell's, a lot of her stories, especially the ones I love that are really, really great, but then some of the other other ones too they just they stick with you and it's not just because of the weirdness of them that certainly plays a part because the worlds are very memorable sometimes you can just make stories that just stick with you and i i feel like that's like the hardest thing to do as a writer it's just intuitive but yes i will read this and then we will have like wrap up thoughts and it'll it'll be a good time i meant to get this done before my wrap up but instead i'm filming this after my wrap up so it's going out late it's fine but you should definitely check out my wrap up because i talk about some other books that i was reading while i was reading all of these but yeah these are all the karen russell books that have been published i read them all this month except this one because i'd already read it but this is karen russell's debut book has one of my favorite short stories of all time and so i read these four to catch up with the rest of her works as you saw it was a time it was an 
interesting time. I started having self-doubts about what I was doing, if it was doing anything, if I was starting to hate Karen Russell, and I think what I ultimately decided on is that when you read an entire author's collection, you're just not gonna like everything they write, and that's just like how it is, especially with short story writers. I will say that Orange World is by far my favorite short story collection by her. Almost all the stories in here are stellar, and it has some of my favorites now. Through all of these books, you can see her writing slowly get better and better, along with like her plotting and characters. So honestly, if you're gonna read any Karen Russell, I would say read the short story St. Lucy's Home for Girls and read this collection. You kind of don't need to read the rest of it, in my opinion. It's probably kind of bad, but like, unless you're a Karen Russell diehard, like, this is just such an exceptional story collection and so much better than her other works. Kind of just read this. I mean, no shade to Karen Russell, obviously. I loved her enough that I wanted to do this project, so. But Karen Russell's debut, which I didn't read this time because I'd already read it, it's just like, it's such a good debut. Like, you can just see the potential in her writing, in her characters, especially in her worlds. I'm doing a thesis next semester. I wish my debut could be that good. It's not. It's not going to be, but I wish. Vampires in the Lemon Grove, her second work, has some interesting stuff in there. I like that she tried to do a more global approach. I just think some of the short stories are not going to last, you know, the test of time, just like some of them are a little yikes with this book. I don't know if I talked about it, but trigger warning, content warning for sexual assault, especially child sexual assault was not expecting that that happened not sure about that choice to be honest but it happened so i can't do anything about it and then the last thing i read it's a novella it's weird and because it's like her older work i don't think it like comes all together especially with the main character it does very much feel like a extended short story i think it might have worked better as a short story just because when you get into novella novel territory you kind of expect certain things for character arcs and that just like doesn't happen in this i think it's Karen Russell exploring her creativity, exploring her worlds, trying to expand into longer works, and like I appreciate this for me, just wasn't perfect. I'm never gonna fully hate any Karen Russell works, and I'm never gonna like put it down that much. Because she exists, because she's so popular, I'm allowed to write and like not be hated in my graduate program. Actually, in my graduate program, there's a lot of people writing speculative, fabulous, surreal stuff, like thank god. It is getting more accepted, but like there's still a lot of pushback, and Karen Russell, Karen Russell's the one that's like making it happen for all of us, so like thank you. I would say her longer works are my least favorite, and her short stories are definitely where it's at for me personally. That's where I get the most enjoyment. To encapsulate what Karen Russell is, it isn't just like speculative fiction, it isn't just like crazy kooky concepts. What I love about Karen Russell is her craft. She is really exceptional about craft. Her writing, her sentences are really beautiful at times, especially in this collection, but she really grounds it in a world she focuses on environment, she focuses on place in a really particular way, which makes the stories really, really good. So like, if that's your thing, maybe try Karen Russell. Just in general, this experiment, I don't know how successful it was. I think I always do better writing when I'm reading a lot of like good stuff. And I was writing during this time for school, so maybe it helped me. I love Karen Russell, but like, I'm not one to emulate her just because I have a little bit of a different focus with my speculative stuff. I'm more driven by the characters, more driven by like social, political agenda stuff, I guess. I don't know. I'm really focused on like themes, civil rights in my stories, I guess. I mean, she does have civil right like topic pieces but like that's not all she does but as a writer reading an entire author's work I think I learned something I hope I learned something I didn't love this project honestly because like it's tough to read a lot of stuff back to back like this but like am I gonna do it again yeah I have like seven or eight months worth of like authors to like go through in the long run it's going to be very beneficial for me to like read a bunch of stuff that's in my wheelhouse I eventually want to be a published author as a literary fiction speculative fabulous author I want to be printed alongside these people so like to know the genre better I think is really important for me especially because while some of this stuff is taught in school, a lot of it isn't. Especially if you don't get the right teacher for you, you're not going to read Karen Russell or anything like this. And for me, I do need to play catch up because there's a lot of sci-fi, fantasy, genre fiction, speculative fiction, fabulous fiction. You know, there's just a lot of this stuff that I haven't read yet that I haven't gotten to. This is a way to get to it, I guess. And I, I don't hate my graduate program. I just, I don't think it's that rigorous for me particularly. I just, I need more rigor. I need more 
work. You know, I know a lot of people in my program, you know, have jobs and kids and stuff, so it makes sense that the program is a little bit more lax. I think graduate programs in general are a little bit more relaxed. I took graduate classes in my undergrad college and it just, it was a lot more intense and that's kind of what I was expecting from graduate school, even if I am a creative writing major. And I'm not disappointed in that, but like, I do think I need to kind of do my own work to get better, do what I want to do. So yeah, I'm gonna keep doing this. I'm going to do this again. I think I learned something. Hopefully I learned something. I'll do this again and then maybe I'll decide I'm crazy, who knows? But tell me if you've ever done anything like this. I feel crazy. Have you read an entire author's discography? Was it worth it? Do you have recommendations? Do you have a guess at who I'm gonna be reading next? Let me know. Let's discuss this project because it was a lot. It was a lot. But anyway, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you guys later and happy reading.